we have Alvin Lee, who's the digital strategist for Singapore Airlines. Thanks, Talia. So let me share my screen. Okay, right. Um, good afternoon, good morning to everyone, um, depending on where you are. And I think that's the beauty of um, uh, webinars and virtual calls where you know everyone can just tune in. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone. Thanks to um, uh, Linux Foundation, Public Health and Affinity for giving me an opportunity to share uh, from SIA point of view, uh, you know, this whole space about COVID health credentials, right? Um, today I'll be sharing um, the, the, the topic on re-enabling off-airport, um, sorry, off-airport check-in for seamless and frictionless uh, passenger journey. And then previously, earlier uh, to this, you, know, you heard from Toby, you heard from uh, Viola on some of the, the, the topics. Um, you know, I will um, re reiterate some of these pointers, so bear with me. Um, but what's, what, what's really important is that um, I'd like to share in terms of uh, what we are seeing from an airline perspective. Okay, so um, you know, COVID hit us uh, almost two years ago. And one of the first few measures governments around the world took was to shut the, the uh, travel borders, right? And flights could not, could not fly, no, couldn't travel, for either for leisure or for businesses. Um, and late last year, or we we'll say mid last year, um, there was early signs and early indicators that some borders were starting to reopen, albeit with very stringent um, uh, measures in place, right? And I think at a, at a point in time, uh, we saw the early indicators that uh, governments require proof of um, COVID-19 test or COVID-19 test first, right, um, for travelers into the country, uh, amongst other uh, requirements that they uh, put onto the, the passengers, right. And these evolve uh, over time, right. So starting with COVID test results, um, and then slowly into early into this year, you will see governments asking for vaccination records, right, and amongst other documents um, for the purpose of uh, to minimize the risk of importing COVID-19 uh, into the country, right? Now, so at a point in time, as an industry, um, we, we, we can realize that, yes, no, it is entirely possible uh, to verify um, test sets manually, okay? So it is possible to do so if travel volumes are low. However, if we are looking at travel volumes uh, in the pre-COVID days, right, manual validation and verification is definitely not sustainable. And I think as an industry, right, we will definitely, we will actually uh, agree uh, jointly that we need a digital solution uh, to help us um, to be able to accurately and securely ascertain the veracity of the um, health credentials. Now, but to do so, um, um, you know, the, 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 the solution could come in many shape and form. And we need a solution that complies with preferably um, a single international standard or at least a minimal number of standards, right? And two, very importantly, that it should be able to interoperable between countries, right? So we need a digital solution that is of certain international standard and can be interoperable. Now, it is important that it's in privacy by design because we are dealing with personal data over here. We are dealing with health data over here. And these are all uh, um, confidential and personal information and should be treated uh, with uh, utmost uh, uh, privacy uh, in mind. Uh, so at a point in time, two years ago, or a year and a half ago, you know, as an industry, we need to know that indeed, right, the, the digital solution that we put in place has to be able to help us as airline to ascertain that the, the test of the vaccine belongs to the traveler, that indeed is genuine and is not tempered, like what Toby has shared uh, earlier in his um, presentation on sharing, right? Um, and governments around the world are also accrediting uh, different testing facility, and we need to make sure that the tests are undertaken in the facility that is approved by the governments and within a stipulated time frame of the destination country, right? So some of you who are familiar in this space will know that in some countries, they stipulate a 72 hours um, um, uh, time frame before they will travel, some 48 hours, right? Similarly, in recent times, you've heard about vaccine doses, you have dose one, dose two, and more recently, you've heard about booster shots. 
Um, and uh, in some instances, there are also what we call as cocktail uh, doses, right? Uh, vaccine doses that are, that are mixed with, uh, between different manufacturers. And we need to make sure that such um, doses um, and timings meet the guidelines that is established by the, by the different governments or at least by WHO, right? Um, and, to, and to make things uh, even more complex, there are different types of COVID-19 tests available, like PCR, ART, so and so forth. And we need to also make sure that the type of test taken uh, is um, as required by the destination country uh, and permitted by the destination country. Right. So, and another important thing why a digital solution uh, is needed is that we want as an airline to re-enable off-airport check-in. Right. So to take away the, the, the load of the load at the check-in load at the airport. So if you are able to enable, re-enable some of the self-service check-in, uh, maybe through our mobile app, maybe through our website, or maybe even through our kiosk, right? This will actually enable and bring back. Um, what passengers have actually enjoyed pre-COVID for a very seamless journey, that's one. And two, for what does it mean to our colleagues, our staff operations, right? We would then have a very efficient uh, airport operations. Now, if you look at um, the entire uh, experience, entire journey uh, for, for our passengers, right? The first thing that comes to mind is information, right? How do we um, get information to the passenger at the right time, uh, at the right moment? And this information could be as early as before the passenger actually books a ticket. Right? We need to make sure that the information is straightforward and easy to understand for our passenger. Right? So, um, well, we, we know that the entry rules to different countries are complicated and complex. How then can we take away some of this complexity and present this information as straightforward and easy to understand for our passenger? In the same vein, when it is easy to understand, it actually allows us as airlines, or more importantly, our staff, our operational staff, uh, a, a, an easy way to understand and to actually process the information for, um, for the passenger to, to board the plane. Okay? So with the information is easy and it's straightforward, it then simplifies the process, a cost-effective process to do so. Okay? Once again, Yes, you know, we, we, if the travel volume is low, the travel demand is low, we are able to have a very manual process to validate and to verify this, the, the, the various certificates or the various test sets or vaccine sets. Now, once the volume goes up, that's what we are starting to see uh, in the past few weeks by, with the vaccination travel lanes established in Singapore, but we need to make sure that it's a scalable process, right? And um, we can't just put um, warm, you, can't, you just cannot just throw warm bodies behind this process. We need to make sure that the, uh, the process that we put in place is scalable and very likely, and what we advocate for is a digital way of um, managing this process, right? To conduct the necessary travel document checks. Now, the process can be the, the devil's in the details, right? You know, what the process looks like and what are the, are the important components of the process. An area of, of importance is the verification process, right? So I spoke about it earlier in my earlier slides where we want to ascertain, you know, the authenticity of the cert if it meets the entry requirements of the country, right? Um, and we need to incorporate the verification process as part of, the, sorry, the verification process as part of the end-to-end -end, um, 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 travel document check process. What's the end outcome of that? Very important, what does it mean to our passenger? Our, our passenger will be able to enjoy a seamless travel experience, right? As we and we enable off airport check-in, uh, maybe kiosk, our mobile or our website. Also very important, what does it mean to our colleagues on the ground? Right? Our colleagues on the ground will then be very much focused on serving our customer, serving our passenger, allowing technology, allowing the digital process to take uh, to take um, to, to do the heavy load of verification and verifying that indeed the passenger has done the necessary checks um, and has the necessary documents in place for uh, to travel into the destination country. Now, what is the landscape? Okay. The landscape continues to be very varied with very different standards, right? Um, in the early days, right, uh, what we saw was, you know, um, 
private sector actually uh, taking, a, taking a charge, right? You have AOK pass, common pass, IATA travel pass coming up with their uh, own standards. Um, and then um, national standards starts to, start, start, starts to evolve and starts to come out, right? So for example, in Singapore, um, I think uh, we have the Singapore um, health standard um, that was also established uh, uh, late last, uh, sorry, last year as well. Regional standard, EUDCC uh, was one um, I think very familiar regional standard that was put in place and it was operationalized uh, actually only in July this year, right? And also, of course, global standard like IKO and WHO, uh, which was also recently put in place. Now, the landscape continues to evolve. We are seeing travel lanes being established and travel lanes with different entry requirements are being established. Right? So in Singapore, um, some of you may have heard of the vaccination travel lanes that was put in place. Um, um, and it's fast evolving, right? It start, started off with travel lanes to Germany and Brunei just two months back. And today, um, I think we have um, more than 10 uh, such uh, travel lanes. Right. Similarly, reciprocal, reciprocal green lanes. And I'm sure globally, there are also other, gov uh, other governments are also establishing different travel lanes um, as um, we want to re-enable uh, 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 re uh, international travel. Um, at the same time, right, uh, we are all, as part of the ecosystem that we are all in, right, uh, as allies are, uh, are verifying different uh, travel, uh, uh, sorry, verifying these health certificates and vaccine certificates, Wait, there are also um, government authorities are also, um, um, I would say, uh, uh, coming in and helping out uh, to, to verify this health cert. So, for example, in Singapore, um, ICA, the Immigration Authority, so yeah, the Immigration Authority of Singapore, right, and now allow passengers to actually upload digitally verifiable health, uh, health cert when applying for the vaccination travel pass or as part of the ESG arrival card. Now, once this is in place, or once this has been operated, so this is in place, and we believe that this could actually potentially remove the need for airlines to verify. You no, know? so um, this information, once the government starts to allow passengers to upload uh, such certificate, uh, governments verify that it did in meets the entry requirements into the country. Right, this information could be passed on to airlines, and we could then. And uh, 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 we can then board our passengers accordingly with confidence that it's been verified and, and approved by the governments. So this is also another scene that is um, that is uh, evolving, and Singapore government is doing so. And I'm, and I think what I'm hearing is that uh, other governments around the world are also similarly um, potentially taking this path as well. Taking a step back, right? Besides um, health documents that are being required, right? We are also seeing non-health documents. Such, such as self assertion form, passenger locator form, approval letter of entries, are, um, um, are being part of what passengers need uh, to submit or need to uh, show uh, and to be checked in, right? So, um, um, you know, I think if we were to go and travel today and you look at the entry requirements in the country, right, you look at there are many other different documents besides health documents uh, that are required. So then the question, then of course, the question that we have as airlines or even as passengers is that which of these documents are here to stay for a long haul and which of these documents are here as a temporal measure and will slowly dissipate over time, right? And this is still um, a, a question mark and things that continue to evolve over time. So over in Singapore Airlines, right, we set up a working team um, to look into this space, right, as early as uh, um, 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 October on 2020. Right, so we engage uh, the key stakeholders like the governments, um, IATA, you know, other airlines in the region, solution providers like, like Affinity uh, at the point in time, and more very importantly, passengers, right, to understand and to assess the landscape. So we conducted POC trials in late 2020 and in early 2021, right? Um, and it's not so much to understand the, I mean, it's not only a, P, a technical POC to understand the technology, but also very importantly is we will also want to use that, take the opportunity to define the operational requirements, to define the workflows. Right? And last but not least is to get um, uh, a feedback from passengers and to see how best can we then uh, design the end-to-end -end process that is um, 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 uh, seamless and frictionless for our passenger, right? Uh, today, we have actually rolled out um, uh, a digital health cert verification solution as part of our check-in flows and, and operational process. But we are very mindful that the landscape continues to evolve. 
and the solution that we have put in place um, is designed to be flexible and to be, to be nimble so that we can uh, adjust and accommodate uh, to the landscape as it continues to evolve. It's human centricity uh, uh, by nature, but because we're always asking ourselves, what does this mean to our passenger and what does this mean to our staff uh, on the ground, right? Maybe at the airport or maybe at the contact center, right? So with that, uh, I hope that you found my sharing um, insightful and interesting and, and, and useful. Uh, thank you. And I'll pass it on to Kalia uh, to introduce to our next speaker. Thank you so much, Alvin. Um, 